Welcome to ElectroArc. Today what we want to do for you is just a quick demonstration of how easy it is for our machines to remove broken tooling. The machine we're looking at today, this is one of our tabletop models. Uh, we make both a number of different table sizes, uh, configurations with different heads. Um, we have a number of different portable machines. Uh, so this particular machine has our IQ, so our in the quill head. Uh, this is a heavy duty precision head which can uh, handle electrodes as small as a 20 thousandths for removing an OT80 tap uh, and this head with this power supply can also remove taps up to two inches in a single pass. Uh, so very wide range of capability for this machine. We're also equipped with our auto feed system uh, which is going to make it pretty much hands free for your operator. Uh, so our in the quill head is permanently mounted into our quill housing. Uh, we've got it mounted onto a vertical column with a horizontal cross arm. Uh, so this has a number of adjustments which we'll go through a little bit later. Um, and so essentially with our process, what we want to do is um, on a tap, we're using an electrode that's half the diameter of the tap size. So what we're going to do, uh, just a quick example here. On a tap, we have our tap, so the, like I said, the, the electrode is hollow. And since it's half the diameter of the tap, all we're doing is taking out the center, separating the uh, core from the flutes. So you can see the flutes are completely left intact. Uh, with the threads not touched. So that's how it's going to be able to remove a broken tap uh, without damaging your part at all. Uh, and just as a quick example of studs, the process is going to be exactly the same. Um, just electrode size will change a little bit. So in this one, uh, we just used an electrode that was roughly about 70% of the diameter and we used an easy out to spin it out. You can also, we can also do um, shaped electrodes. So in this one, we used a square electrode. So you could uh, do a square electrode, burn part way through, and use a ratcheting tool to spin it back out. Our machines have a very wide range of capability. And just here is a lot larger example. So as you can see, the threads were pretty well destroyed in here. And what we did, we just used a smaller electrode, made a series of cuts to have a slicing action there, uh, which relieved enough of the pressure that we were able to turn it out. So the machine we're looking at here is an AC powered machine. And as I said, this is our permanently mounted head. And here is one of our portable heads. So this portable head is a little bit different from that one in the, in the fact that um, it can be chucked into your machine tools. So we have a half inch by two inch shank at the top. So that's going to allow it to chuck up into either one of our portable magnetic based fixtures or one of your machine tools like a CNC, drill press, mill, any of that uh, type of equipment. In the head we have an LED current monitor system. So that's going to allow your operator to just just watch a series of LEDs. They're green, yellow, and red. And all they have to do is just keep it in the green to yellow range. So that's going to tell you the optimum speed at which to feed it. So as I mentioned, this is an AC powered machine. Uh, we also make machines that use a DC output for the power supplies. And the only difference there really is going to be based on how much carbide tooling you might be taking out. Um, if you have an abundance of carbide and that's what you're doing mostly, we might guide you a little bit more toward a DC machine as they are just a little bit more efficient on carbide tooling. Now AC or DC are able to remove any types of tooling like carbides, high speed steels, uh, ink and nails and materials like that. So either power supply can do pretty much any material. Um, as I said, just one is slightly more efficient on carbide tooling. So with that, what we're going to demonstrate for you today is I have an aluminum block here to simulate a part. So as you can see, there should be nothing in any of those. So we'll use this center hole and I have a 3 8 inch tap here. So we'll just thread that in about an inch deep, break it off and then take it right back out.
so there you can see the tap we have left and that's what we broke off there. So since uh, the electrodes are only 50% of the tap diameter, alignment is very easy with our machines. Uh, really you just want to make sure you're pretty well centered over that tap. Uh, so just line this up here. Alright, so it should look pretty good right there. Now our machines use three different components to how they operate. You have head vibration, so the head's just going to move up and down at about 20 thousandths of an inch. That makes and breaks the electric arc. We have coolant that flushes, so the coolant does two things. Number one, it obviously keeps everything cool, so you're not going to get any heat distortion to your part. But it also flushes out the particles as they're being disintegrated, uh, which helps make the process more efficient. And the third thing, of course, is the electricity that's passed through. So with that, we'll get started here. Uh, we do have just a splash bag that's just going to help contain the coolant a little bit. And we'll just put a rag or two around there. Arker head, we have an LED system, and that's the same in the IQ head. So we have our LEDs right here built right into the coil housing. So again, you're just going to watch, make sure they're staying in the green to yellow range. And that's going to give you your optimum speed for disintegration. Now with our fixture here, I do also have a depth gauge uh, that's built into our fixture. So I can monitor how deep I'm going. Uh, with this particular machine, we do have an auto uh, shut off switch. So I have an adjustable depth stop that I can set to whatever depth I want it to be. And once it gets into that depth, it will trigger that auto shut off and shut the machine down for me. That's going to be extremely helpful when doing blind holes. As you can see, I'm just feeding manually, but I can simply just turn on the auto feed engage that and now the machine becomes basically hands-free for your operator. And uh, we do have an adjustment here. Uh, we do have variable speed ranges for the auto feed. Um, you can go up to about an inch per minute and as slow as about a tenth of an inch per minute. So we triggered our depth stops. We should be all the way through there. So as you can see, the tap has been completely removed. So now all we would need to do, uh, it does look like there's a flute stuck on the side there, so we would just use a magnetic pick to pull that out of there, and then we can run a new tap through uh, just to get rid of any other debris that might be in there. So here are those flutes. You can see the threads are intact. So now, like I said, we'll just run a new tap through just to clean out the little bit of debris that's left during the disintegration process. So you can see how nicely that just threads right back in there. So now that that's cleaned out, it's ready to go back to work for you. 
So in just that short amount of time, we were able to completely remove a 3 8 tab about an inch deep from that material. So with our fixtures, I'll be able to show you here how we have a number of different movements available for you. Uh, so we just have locking levers. Now in this particular one, we have a vertical column here with a horizontal cross arm. So this cross arm can rotate 360 degrees around the vertical column. Now that's going to allow you with a tabletop model like this, if you had a large part that doesn't quite uh, fit on the table, you could actually just turn this so that the head is facing off the table and do something you know, uh, off the back of the table itself. Now this cross arm also has linear movement, so we can slide it in and out. And then the head itself can also be unlocked and rotate 360 degrees around this cross arm axis. So that's going to allow you to use the head in any position. Uh, obviously in this position we were just disintegrating down, uh, but you can use it horizontally or you can use it even inverted. Uh, the disintegrating head can work in any orientation. And that's going to be true with all of the heads we use. So a few common questions that we have come up, um, you know, as far as how our machines can work. First of all, can you get shock to burn from our machines? And the answer to that is no. As long as you're using the machine properly, you're not going to get injured from it in any way. Our machines are a very low voltage output. Our largest power supply only has a maximum output of about 34 volts. Uh, so you're not going to get hurt from it in any way. And a question that kind of ties along, in along with that is, um, will this cause any damage to your machine tools? As we saw with the Arker head, that can be chucked into a drill press, a mill, or a CNC. Uh, a typical concern is feedback into a CNC machine and damaging that. So same thing, as long as it's being used properly and grounded properly, no, it's not going to damage your machine tools either. Uh, so one of the common questions is, how long does an electrode last? Uh, so the material we're using here is a material called molybdenum. Uh, so those are going to be for your smaller diameter electrodes, usually half inch or smaller. Um, it's a very durable material. It erodes at a rate of about three-eighths of an inch of the electrode for every inch you disintegrate through. So uh, you know, our standard lengths are six inch, nine inch, and 12 inch. So you're going to be able to get a number of taps, bolts, uh, you know, whatever you're trying to remove out with each electrode. Uh, larger diameter tooling, uh, we have graphite electrodes. And those erode at a rate of only one-eighth of an inch uh, of the electrode for every inch you disintegrate through. I did talk about the you know, smallest uh, diameter taps in that which we can take out, which is an OT80 tap. Uh, and on the large side, this particular machine can do a tap up to two inches in a single pass, but we also have larger power supplies that can do even larger tooling. Uh, and I showed you the large uh, two-and-a-half inch diameter stud that we took out. So there's really not much of a limit on the upper side, just to how you want to take it out. Um, blind holes I also mentioned is a common question. Uh, we do have the depth gauges built into the side of the heads. Um, and even when you're using it in like a drill press or something like that, you should still have a depth gauge so you can just set that for you know, approximately how deep your hole should be. And that should get you pretty well to the bottom of it. Process wise, um, you know, is this going to be any different for taps versus bolts um, or anything like that? No. The process is exactly the same no matter what you're doing. The only thing that would change would be the diameter of electrode you're using. Uh, the process for the machine itself is always going to be the same, and that's the same across their AC or DC power supplies. They all work essentially the same. It's just the setup that will change a little bit. Uh, another common question is maintenance. Um, Maintenance-wise, machines are extremely low maintenance. Uh, really, all you want to worry about keeping uh, is just clean coolant through it, really. Uh, and for the coolant for um, our machines, we use just a water-soluble primer. Um, the machines can also operate on fresh water. Uh, if you do operate it on fresh water, you just want to make sure that you get a water-soluble coolant flush through it before you put the machine away, just to help re-lubricate the pump. Um, but other than that, um, you know, just a water-soluble coolant, no, no synthetics and no oil-based products. Uh, so those are just some of the common questions. Uh, for any additional questions, Feel free to email us or call us at any time and we'll be happy to help you.